So I realize when I come on here into kind of this YouTube wrestling bubble, I, I, you know, I got to admit for years the whole thing of calling it the YouTube wrestling community, eh, it is what it is. Like YouTube wrestling bubble, maybe, maybe a bit more appropriate. But um, I know coming on here that I typically represent the older side of professional wrestling. Uh, not as old as a couple, uh, certainly at least as old as many. And definitely older, and in some cases, a lot older than a lot of other ones. That is just reality. So, as I think about my time on this earth, my time in a lot of things, my time as a professional wrestling fan, and like, now as I've really reached uh, middle age, you know, I, I really start to think more and more about uh, nostalgia and longing for those good memories of the past and trying to stubbornly cling to them and hold on to them as much as I possibly can for as long as I possibly can. Because in a lot of ways, life can find a way to continue to kick you in the seat. So as a result, you, you want to hold on to those positive vibes and those positive memories. And I will say, like, doing this 30 Days of Taker video series so far even, and we're not even done, this is just day 17, uh, you know, Bringing back a flood of good, positive vibes, good, positive memories, good, positive emotions. In a, in a complex, challenging year like this one, could certainly use that. But just in general, with life, could certainly use that. Now, it can be dangerous sometimes to always look back instead of looking ahead. You know, what's done is done, what's gone is gone, and those memories are great. And sometimes the bad memories are the best of all because those are the ones that if you choose to, you can learn from and make yourself better. But it get caught living too much in the past. And I certainly can be accused of doing that sometimes and probably 100% valid and true there. Uh, but when the WWE puts out a documentary like this, similar what they did to this mortician one for the Paul Bearer story, they did one here for the Brothers of Destruction, and you've got this sit-down between The Undertaker and Kane where they're kind of talking about their career stories and their career paths, their career arcs, their storyline intersection, their storyline diversion, like, and how everything played off over the years. Like, it's another flood of overwhelmingly good and positive wrestling memories. You know, what, going back and watching this, you know, the best thing about it is it was less than an hour, so you could do it really quickly and then come on here uh, and record this review. But... The Undertaker and Kane. Kane and The Undertaker. You know, when you really sit there and think about it, like when you think about one, more often than not, you're going to think about the other. And I really think that holds true for both parties. Like you might say, hey, Kane, da 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 da, Undertaker. Undertaker, da da da, Kane. Like, those two are always going to be interconnected through wrestling history, similar to what you would think of with Austin and Mr. McMahon and their on-screen rivalry for all those years. Like, you're going to think about it, I think, to a certain degree in that type of light. You know, like, that's going to be one of those ones that you can't think about one without quickly, inevitably thinking about the other. And I thought that this documentary, in the short amount of time that they really spent it kind of diving on the one story here, you know, I thought it did a pretty good job of kind of showing why that is and how instrumental both guys were to the other's career. Like, it's one thing to say that Taker in 1997 was an established top guy. Taker 1997 didn't have to have anybody help him. He was fine where he was. And to a degree, that's true. So maybe a lot of people will say, well... You know, Undertaker did a lot more for Kane's career than Kane did for The Undertaker's career. And in theory, that makes sense when you think about it. Like, you know, in this documentary, I found it was interesting that they talked about the Isaac Yankum thing. Like, got Kane to actually address it a little bit. Uh, but they didn't even touch on the fake diesel crap. So they even left that part out. That's how bad that memory is. But, well, it's easy to look at Kane and say that Glenn Jacobs had a couple of failed gimmicks and a couple of failed uh, pushes and opportunities so third time was the charm, but if it wasn't that gimmick, that character, that association with Paul Bear, that association, that initial feud with The Undertaker, that none of it would have worked, you're probably right. 
you're absolutely probably right. But it doesn't necessarily matter that much because in the grand scheme of things, sometimes the stars align and the opportunity presents itself. And it's about those that are willing to receive it and take it. And my God, did Cain choose to receive it and take it and do so in a big, big way. But as much as, again, you could talk about Cain and how instrumental Undertaker was for him, he, he was really, really important to the Undertaker. Like the introduction of the Kane character, like I thought it was interesting where they were talking about these guys working, you know, initially when Kane was Unabomb down in Smoky Mountain Wrestling and, you know, how they had a really good match and Taker kind of noticed that, he, hey, this is somebody I want to work with someday. And, you know, when it got to the point in 97 that they were looking for initially kind of a one-off opponent for Taker, like it's kind of a reminder of those days, like you used to have a top guy and then you would bring in other guys to feud with your top guy, specifically bringing them in to feud with that top guy. But there is no question that Kane had a sizable, significant impact on the life and the legs and the career of The Undertaker, whether that is still as the dead man and like ministry taker, corporate ministry taker, da 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 da. You know, whether you're talking about his conversion to being human taker and the American badass and big evil and everything, like you talk about the brothers of destruction, like. You could go on and on and on, but I thought this documentary also did a really good job of, you know, not just flat out ball washing The Undertaker, like certainly, you know, a documentary like this is going to do that in part. It's also going to tell a story. Um, so I thought they did a really good job of, you know, kind of doing justice to Glenn Jacobs and talking about how important he was as Kane. And I really liked hearing some of the behind the scenes stuff that they went into. It wasn't a ton of it, but there was some of it. I like some of the stories that we had told. You know, I really like their their talk, especially from Taker specifically. I think he was very reminiscent about the whole thing and talking about how he feels like from a WWE standpoint, it's the greatest story ever told. And, and the reality is, is, is that I think he's absolutely right. When you look at longevity, when you look at impact, when you look at big spots, big moments, big things that were done, I don't know that any story that WWE has ever told can match up to this, you know, especially for no other reason than the longevity of it. Like to this day, as the guys were both able to physically go at all, you could always pair Undertaker and Kane together as the brothers of destruction and in some type of short three to six month run, it is really going to work and it's really going to work well. And I would even argue to this day, if both guys were still physically in shape, if you came back, one more time with a three-month singles program with those two guys against each other, it would still really, really work. I guess, to me, the definition of a great story is something that even when you feel like you get closure, even when you feel like you've seen so many chapters, it leaves you wanting more and more and more. It's even like you think about when Austin comes back and he's in the ring with Mr. McMahon. It's all feelings and nostalgia. The chemistry is there, though, more importantly, and people remember and it will always work, no matter what. Vince, 10 years from now, could still be kicking, but he could be in a wheelchair or in a walker or something, and Austin could stun him, stun him, and the crap would work exactly the same. But when you think about, like, greatest stories ever, like, you know, as brothers, as friends, as opponents, like, it is the greatest story that WWE ever told. Admittedly, when you do a documentary like this, you know, they really tried to focus on these two guys, which is great from a subject matter piece. There's also a conscientious decision of, are you going to cover the entire scope? Or are you going to talk about a bit and a piece of it? Like you look at the Undertaker Last Ride documentary, you talk about what five parts. So you split these different parts out, even though it was only spanning three years, like felt like it did the right amount of justice to take her and his story, where he was, like what was going through his mind, what was going on. Like you were really able to dive deep there. And that's why I appreciate that they kind of split that out into that many parts. And again, they're really effectively, for the most part, only covering about three years worth of time. I think the one thing that maybe I could say, and I could have possibly offered the same critique of the Paul Bearer documentary, is that you're trying to cover a lot of time in a short window. 
similar to like a lot of the old wrestling DVDs that we used to go out and buy, talking about this wrestler's biography, and it'd be like an hour and a half to two hours. It doesn't feel like it's ever enough. And here, the fact that you got these two guys talking to each other on camera and talking about these behind the scenes type of things and both guys really opening up about it. I don't know about you guys, but I could have used a four or five part series just for this. And I think what that would have allowed them to do is to be able to more in depth tell the story at the different phases and the different stages of both of their careers. Um, I think by putting it into one like 55, 60 minute block, again, I think because they were trying to condense so much time and so much story into such a small window, I thought they did a really good job with what they did, admittedly. But I almost feel like, whereas maybe an Undertaker Mankind documentary thing like this, you could probably get away with in an hour. Because there's plenty to talk about, plenty of memories, but it's within a couple of years window. You're talking about this thing with Kane and Taker extends two plus decades re in reality. And you're trying to confine that in less than an hour. I personally would have liked to have seen this broken out. You know, from having one episode just dealing with the buildup and the push to WrestleMania 14, the subsequent Inferno match. To them, you know, being the brothers of destruction for the first time. To all the different phases of their careers, both against each other and then individually. Um, I, I personally would have liked to have seen that a little more. So I would recommend you go and watch it because, like I said, it's less than an hour. And it does a good job. Like, if you want a quick hit of the highlights and, and you're kind of fascinated to hear these two guys talk about some of these things from their perspective, which is not necessarily something you would have expected to see in years past, I certainly recommend watching it. But again, to me, I feel like you probably could have done with a couple of more episodes here. Like there probably was at least three hours of real quality content. If you wanted to break it up into three phases, I think you could have done that and probably told an even better story. As personally, I don't know about you guys, but if you have watched it already, I would have liked to have heard more about the backstory. I would have liked to have heard more about some of their stories, some of their favorite memories, some of the things they liked the least. Like, you know, when they were talking about the Inferno match, and they are talking about the fact they didn't rehearse that beforehand, and that probably a good thing, but how hot it was, and every time the flames would shoot up. Like, those are the types of stories that these guys had for days that really... The, the serious wrestling fans like us, those are the things we want to hear about. Because it's not like you get Taker and Kane doing a bunch of shoot interviews uh, with, with, what's the dude's name, Sean Oliver for KFA Commentaries or, uh, you know, Rob Feinstein, RF Video, like, you know, or some of the other ones like Hannibal TV and so forth. Like, you don't get these guys doing a ton of those interviews. I know Kane's been out there doing a little bit more interviews in recent years. But in general, like, I would have loved to have heard more of those road stories, more of those stories about the different things that happened during their feuds. Uh, it was a good documentary. It certainly was. I just personally felt there's a lot more content there. There's a lot more possibility of what you could have done. And they probably did a little bit of a disservice to the subject matter by trying to constrain it in such a short time box. And that's just me, though. Uh, if you have checked it out already on the network, uh, let me know what you thought about it in the comments. If you haven't, again, like I said, it's less than an hour. Go check it out. It, it's still a worthwhile watch and listen to hear those two guys talk about their uh, their intersecting stories. It, it, it was still a fascinating look. It's just, it disappointed me a little bit because I wanted more. Uh, but thank you guys again for checking out this 17th installment of the 30 Days of Taker video series. And keep right on rolling. Have another one coming up tomorrow. So... Thank you guys. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. I will see you later.